preacher's day.
Church of Christ moved down the road. But I thought the Jesus people needed him to preach. I believe there's people here not ashamed of the name. Not, to be, not ashamed to be called by the greatest name that has ever been given. Because we know that the Bible says God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. There is no name like the name of Jesus. Aren't you glad for that tonight? Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Praise God to be here. Amen. I just ask that you remember my wife in your prayer. She's not felt good for a little while. Pretty bad today. So <clears throat> been praying and seeking God. She's got, I'm not sure. She said it's either a sinus infection or the flu. But one or the other, she just does not feel good. But, amen, I know she's praying for us. Praise God. I am going to take you tonight in the scripture to John chapter number 2. Attempt to deliver a little thought to you out of this. John chapter number 2. I'll begin reading at verse number 1. The Bible says this. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto them, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. There were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, parentheses, but the servants which drew the water knew, praise God, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. When men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Amen. I am going to take this thought out of verse number 5, where his mother said, Whatever he saith unto you, do it. Just do it. Just do it. Praise God. Praise God. I, reading this, amen, Jesus is just coming out, amen, after his uh, uh, calling his disciples and the temptation in the wilderness and all these things have taken place. He comes and he's invited to a marriage and his disciples with him. The Bible says his mother comes to him and says they, they don't have any wine. I'm sure he could have looked at her and said, it's not my marriage. They should have bought the wine before they got married. But he didn't say that. He said, my hour has not yet come. It's not time for me to start this yet. She didn't take what he said too much because she's done been watching him and she knows that his birth wasn't a natural birth, wasn't normal. He was a different child from the beginning. So she just knew that, that whatever he had to say, we just need to pay attention to it. Just do it. Praise God. He looks at her, looks at the people, and he says, Fill the water pots with water. Sounds simple. I don't know if they ran to a well, run to a creek, run to the river. I don't know where they got the water. 
But they didn't have fields of water pot. They didn't just go three quarters where they wouldn't spill nothing on the way back. But they put every drop they could get inside of that vessel, brought it back and set it down. Six water pots after the custom of the Jews for purifying. The Bible says he didn't say no prayer over this water pots. What no magic potions dropped inside of it. All it was put the water in, draw the water out. <laughs> Praise God. I feel the Holy Ghost already. When they tasted this wine, they'd never tasted nothing like it. Matter of fact, they started bearing record. Well, most of the time you're going to save the, 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 serve a little bit of the good stuff, and then after they've drunk a little while, you get rid of the old stuff. But you save the best. <laughs> praise God, praise God. On the last. You know, sometimes it's it's not, hey man, looking at this, it wasn't nothing special about the water pots. Wasn't anything great or fantastic or awesome about the water. But made, what made all the difference in the world was that the servant grabbed the vessel and run to the river, got the water and come back. It was obedience. It was doing what God told him to do. Amen. Do you realize, that I thought of another person, the Bible said that, that, that there was a, a man, a king, that, that had leprosy. The Bible said this lady told him, there's a prophet back in our land. Where I come from, there's prophets. The Bible says that, that he said, well, well, let's go see the prophet then. When he got there, the Bible, the, he didn't even sit, come out himself. He sent a servant. Servants are important, church. Don't ever feel like you being a servant of Christ doesn't amount to much because there's no greater service than being servant unto the Most High God. You're not going to deliver something that's weak or frail or, or ineffective, but what He gives you, amen, causes things to change. Causes circumstances to be turned around. It causes problems to not be that anymore. Amen. And when amen, he come out and finally come out, he said, go down and dip down in muddy Jordan seven times. Oh, he got all upset. There's all kind of clean waters. He sent me down to a muddy Jordan. Somebody looked at him and said, if he'd asked you to do something hard, you wouldn't have had a problem with that. Oh, we ain't got a problem trying to do hard things. It's the simple things. It's the easy things that cause this problem because there's something easier or better we can think to make it uh, more uh, uh, worthwhile to do. Amen. So what did he do? He finally humbled himself and went down in the Jordan. Went down one time, come back up with leprosy. Went down two times, come back up with leprosy. Went down three times, come back up with leprosy. Come on. Hey man, the man of God said go down seven. Hey man, he wasn't going to get it in a half. He wasn't going to get it at three quarters. you got to be able to do what he's told you to do in order to get what he wants you to have. Oh, five times, six times. Finally, on the seventh time, he goes down. He comes back up, and he's got baby skin again. Oh, he's smooth. He's perfect. Why? Because he was obedient unto the word, and he just done it. Praise God. It's simple. Take these water pots and fill them with water. Now just imagine the servant. The process of wine is not that simple. <laughs> they didn't have time to gather the grapes, put it in the press, stomp out the juice, and come and have it to be fermented in a matter of seconds and bring them some wine. Oh, Jesus has a process that causes your faith and obedience to turn a thing that should take a long process and a long time to accomplish and he can cause things to happen immediately. Oh, praise God. He's able to open blinded eyes immediately. 
He can make the lame to walk without therapy. He can make it walk immediately. He leaped and went into the temple blazing and rejoicing. Praise God. Nothing special. The stones, water pots made of stone. But obedience makes the difference. Somebody said it a little while ago. Acts 2.38. Don't question it. Just do it. What they don't realize is, in the process of repentance, you're taking that water pot And you're bringing it to God. Then you take that water pot out to the river somewhere. And you baptize it in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. After the water was put in, they didn't know how it happened or what took place. But what was in there was stronger than what it started out to be. Hallelujah. He said you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is stronger than what it starts out. Amen. It causes you to be controlled. It's a drink that causes you to be under the influence. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, don't be filled with wine with the word this excess, but be you filled with the Spirit. what he said. No man puts new wine in the old bottles. But Jesus took old water pots put water in the old water in the old water pots and in the process of obedience, cause the pot and the water to become something new. Woo, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but all things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Just do it. Praise God. He tells us in his word just to do some things. Pray without ceasing. Just do it. You know what happens? He said there a little while ago. You wake up in the morning. First thing pops in your mind, what you got to do. You're already running ten different directions. You ain't even done took the covers off. Whenever... You start a day, you ain't sure which direction you should go. You done started off the wrong way. I guarantee you, if you fall down on your knees before you fall down in your thoughts, you'll stand up on your feet and you'll have more clarity to your life. You'll have a vision to follow. You'll have a direction to go. And I guarantee you, you'll touch somebody along the way. Because what you got will go old and stagnant. It'll go stale if you just let it set. He didn't put it in there, just leave it in there. It wasn't just to have a full pot. It was to take it in, dip it out. Come on. It was put it in, pick it out. Ah, you got to take it. you got to give it. Amen. That's the world. Amen. Have, he said, give out thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up. Ah, you got to give it. It ain't enough just to get it. It ain't enough just to feel it. But you got to give it. you got to give it. Praise God. you got to take what's in there and use it to show somebody there is something better than what you got. They're drowning in misery. They're running to the water holes, but they ain't running there to get anything that's going to change their life. They're playing. 
singing with water. They're playing with water. People talk about playing with They're playing with water. See, it's important to understand what's going on because when you don't, you can find yourself in the same formation. You can follow their steps. There's a problem when the blind leads the blind. They're both going to end up in their own place. Praise God. He says and tells us to be a light. He said we are a light, a city, which is set upon a hill, and it cannot be hid. I don't care how much uh, you try to stay in the closet uh, and you try to do something that doesn't draw attention to the God that pulled you out of the muck and the mire. Uh, you got to understand uh, this little light of mine, uh, I'm going to let it shine. Uh, let it shine till Jesus comes. Uh, I'm going to let it shine uh, all over this world. Uh, I'm going to let it shine. Uh, there's somebody out there lost. They need to see the light. There's somebody ain't know where the whole men was. They need to find the light. Who's got the light? Hallelujah. Just do it. Bear ye one another's burden. Come on. People are out there and they're crumbling under the load. They're crumbling under the pressure. Their knees are buckling and they're not finding any chance or hope of coming out of that position that they find themselves in. Oh, that he said, ye which are strong ought to bear the infirmities of oh, the weak. Don't question it. Don't try to figure out something easy. Come on, put your shoulder to the load. Bring your brother back up. Bring him back to the house of God. Help strengthen him. Oh, help him be what he should be. Just do it. Praise God. Saul learned a lesson one day about that. Samuel said, go down there and utterly destroy everything of the Amalekites. Don't spare anything. Flesh, animal, whatever it is, utterly destroy it. He went down. Samuel comes out to meet him after the battle. He says this. Oh, Saul, he's dancing. Oh, I have done what you told me to do. I went down and I destroyed Am Amalekites, Amalek. He ain't no more. Well, wait a minute. Samuel says, uh, your words and what I'm hearing are two different things. If you have just done it, what do I hear? The lowing of the oxen and the bleeding of the sheep. Come on, if you have done it, what does this I hear mean? Oh, Saul said, I saved a few of the best so we could sacrifice them unto God. Oh, but listen here, Samuel said, look here, boy, obedience is better than a sacrifice. Oh, you ain't going to help nobody with a sacrifice, but you will help them with obedience. We already got the sacrifice. We don't need that no more. Come on, am I right? Jesus was my substitute. Jesus was my sacrificial lamb. I couldn't do it myself. They wasn't a goat. They wasn't a heifer. They wasn't a pearl dove. They was nothing that could take away the sin of the whole world. But Jesus, Jesus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus went 
went to the garden. He's praying. He said, oh, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He prayed that three times. I can hear the, the words that come back to him and says, just do it. Just do it. And you know what Jesus' response was? He sang in there on the cross. He's done being beaten. Wounds, stripes all over his body. There's a crown of thorns that's pressed into his head. The blood is rolling down into his eyes. Ah, oh, they done drove nails into his feet and into his hands. Ah, oh, and he looks up and he says this. It is finished. Lord, if this is right, this, 
Give me some kind of witness. Give me some kind of sign that says, I'm where you want me to be. I've gotten past those days. I was like Travis said a little while ago, last time he heard me preach, I closed the book. Didn't even read the scripture text. Because I got to start testifying. God was working and anointed that. I just left that what I had studied uh, on the pulpit. And I, I went on ahead with what God wanted to say. He asked me, he said, are you ready? I said, I don't know. So you just don't know till you get behind the pulpit and let the Lord start working. Once he gets started, amen, then it's up to you, amen, to be obedient. See here, ministry fight, fight it all the time. Trying to be where God wants them to be. Studying and praying, trying to get the mind of God. See, we, we understand, brother, that, that what, what we have is the greatest responsibility in encouraging and helping you grow. If we can't help you grow, we're not the person for the job. What we have got to see in our congregation is growth. I started pastoring a church back, back, let me see how long it was, about 11 years, 12 years ago. And I was there for seven years. When I started there, there were no young people. To me, a church without young people is the sign of a dying church. If there's no young people that's coming up under and learning how to praise God, learning how to testify, learning how to sing, how to play, how to worship God in spirit and truth, that church will die when the last person falls off the face of the earth. We went down and we started this pastor in this church. There was 12 people there and voted whenever I started. Five of them left because they didn't like me. But we started services. And you're talking about this, this is a crowd. There's sometimes what we had down there. We got having church and the services was getting, every service was getting anointed and anointed and anointed. We had a service on a Sunday night. A man, the power and the presence of God was so great. After service, you know, we dismissed. Some people was out on the porch. Some people was down in the parking lot. They was all over the church in little groups talking here and there. And this one young lady, She's almost in tears, and she said, can we have church tomorrow night? How many times do people come begging for church? Scripture tells me if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you're going to be filled. I said, okay. I said, how can you deny somebody? This is a, she's a woman probably in her 30s. And she's almost in tears begging to come back to church tomorrow night. How can you turn that down? I said, yeah. I said, well, we'll start. I said, we'll go through Wednesday. See what happens by the end? He said, the Lord's once. We'll go on the rest of the week. I said, we'll just go see how it goes. So we come back Monday. Another awesome presence of God. Well, no visitors. It's just our regular congregation. But the power and the presence of God was so great. We had out of those five, seven that stayed with us, five of them need the Holy Ghost. So we were praying and working hard around the altar trying to help pray these people through. And throughout the week, other people started coming in. Monday night, we were praying. And I done, I done preach, and, and, and I usually preach hard when I preach. And I'm over here and I'm praying with an up and down the altar, trying to help them break through to the Holy Ghost. 
and I step up from the altar and I start pacing back and forth across the pulpit like this and I'm just praying and I'm meditating upon God and the Lord speaks to me he says take the oil and go around to all of the windows and the doors and anoint this place I didn't say why I didn't question I just done it I took the oil and I went to all the windows I put all around all of those, went to the doors, put it all the way. I just went from one end all the way around to the other. I come back, and I set the oil back down, and I come back and went to pacing, praying. What no more than a minute after I set the oil down and started walking, that one of the sisters got the Holy Ghost. Well, just a couple minutes after that, another one got the Holy Ghost. We had two get the Holy Ghost on Monday night. We come back Tuesday, preaching, praying around the altar. We had two more get the Holy Ghost on Tuesday night. We come back Wednesday. We, we, we pray and we work and we preach. I about lost every string in my voice cords that I had. I had to start calling for help to come down and help us get through that week. But we went on, and we kept going revival all week long. Amen. There was a man, amen, that uh, in his testimony will tell you that he wanted to serve God as a young man, but he run. He wouldn't turn his life over. And he was about 40 years old when he finally come to the Lord. And from that point, he had been praying, trying to receive the Holy Ghost. And he's up 70 years old, and he still ain't got the Holy Ghost. Uh, but in that week, he got the Holy Ghost too. Come on. What am I telling you? Whenever you do what God wants you to do, uh, there ain't going to be no question whether he'll do what he said he'll do. Your obedience will cause things to get in motion. And you'll find out those ones you've been praying on, you've been calling their names out before God. You just do it and you watch what God will do. Oh, he'll break the chains of addiction. He'll break the chains of perversion. He'll set them free from the power of sin and death. And He'll deliver them unto their kingdom of his dear son. Does anybody believe what I'm telling you tonight? Does anybody believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what she has or even think according to the power worketh within us? Praise God. Started out as water, but it's become a stronger. Started out as water, but it's anointing now. Oh, Hallelujah. It has changed. It ain't only changed from water to wine. It's changed the water pot it was in. Come on, anybody hear me? It ain't only changed, and it's better than what it was, but it's changed the pot, and I'm better than what I was because of what's inside of me. Praise God. Praise God. You know what? We wonder sometimes. Our question is whether we're good enough. You know what Moses said? I, I stutter, Lord. He said, this is less someone else. Go, go, go down to Egypt. Come on, I'm preaching to you now. He tried to figure out every reason why he shouldn't be the one doing it. Couldn't speak well. Bible says God's anger was kindled. He said, what about Aaron? I know he can speak. Gave him a mouthpiece. <laughs> Who shall I say that has sent me? 
I ain't got nothing behind me. I'm not representing anything. I don't have letters with authority behind backing up what I am trying to go down there and do. You tell them that I am, that I am, has sent you. How are they going to believe that? Well, you got in your hand. Rod, throw it down. When he threw it down, become a serpent. God said, take it up by the tail. He picked it up, turned back into a rod. What's he doing? He's showing him that there's more in his possession than what he really realizes. Oh, come on, you got to hear this. Amen, listen. Amen, sometimes we think, amen, there's other preachers that can preach it better than we can. There's other singers that can sing much prettier than we can sing. There's other musicians that can play more skillfully than I can. But let me tell you what the scripture says. Amen, for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified under the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Now listen to this. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, are called, but God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to not things that are. Just do it, because God has called you, because God has chosen you. Ah, oh, you're going to confound the mighty, you're going to bring down the wise, because you're a tool in the hand of God. going to put together a toolbox. Let's see if this is what you would put in yours. Foolish things. Weak things. Base things. Things that are not. Nobody knows about But what I just told you was God's toolbox. Woo! Hallelujah. He, he didn't call, hey man, the big wise man that, that's got all these degrees and diplomas, placed it all over his wall. He didn't call, hey man, the big weightlifter that can lift the most weight. He didn't call the one that can run the fastest. Oh, no, he didn't. He chose the weak things. Those of us that don't feel like we got a right to stand and testify. He chose us which are base. That doesn't mean, amen, that we feel like we're anything. God had chosen you to do a great work, to confound the mighty, to bring down things that think they are. You belong to God. Just do it. That was in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You need to go back and read that. Because when the devil questions why you're doing it, you can tell him. Whatever category you feel like you fall into, weak, base, things that are not, it all serves a purpose in the plan of God. I said it all serves a purpose in the plan of God. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. If for no other reason, because the foolishness of God is wiser than man. Ah, uh, because the sweetness 
of God is stronger than man. Can I tell you, just do it. If God tells you to do something, oh, I don't care what they're going to think. Go back and pray for your brother. I don't care what they think. Go back and pray for your sister. Ah, I don't care what it is. If he brings them to your mind, fall on your knees and pray for them. God has chosen you to do a great work. Just do it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 You know what the devil's going to tell you? The devil's going to tell you nobody wants to hear that. The devil's going to try to cheat you out of what God wants to give you. Come on. You know what the book of Revelation said? He said they overcome him by the word of their testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. If you don't give your testimony, you're being overcome. You're not overcoming. Come on. To be an overcomer, you got to testify. Amen. To make sure you overcome, there's the blood of the Lamb which cannot be overtaken. Come on. Your testimony, amen, is going to be, and what your testimony can't do, the blood's going to make up the difference. Oh, come on. The blood is going to make up the difference. Come on, testify. Testify. Witness for God. Don't let the devil cheat you out of your victory. Somebody ought to believe this tonight. This is true. This is true. This is true. Amen. Let, let me ask you this. What do we know the devil is for sure? And you're going to believe that you know, nobody wants to hear your testimony? Come on. You're going to believe a lie that says they don't want to hear you talk about what God has done for you? Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm not going to believe a lie and be damned. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm going to testify for Jesus. I'm going to talk about Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. We got to believe. Isaiah said, Who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Come on. Has he revealed himself to you? Have you seen the power and the anointing and the presence of God break things in your life? Who hath believed our report? Who believes about Jesus? Who believes that he's able? Who believes? Oh, somebody ought to praise him in the house. Somebody ought to 